Quilters Newsletter TV, the Quilters Community, is brought to you by Handy Quilter, designed by a quilter for quilters, and Husqvarna Viking, keeping the world sewing for over 140 years. Hi, and welcome to Quilters Newsletter TV, the Quilters Community. I'm Mary Kate Carpetris, and I'm here today with a couple of other members of the Quilters Newsletter team. I'm here with Susan Geddes, who is our art director, and Lori Baker, our creative editor. And we're here today because we want to talk about this quilt that's hanging on our design wall. Um, it's a quilt called Anniversary Stars, and we are patterning it. We're um, publishing the pattern for it in our October-November 2014 issue. And we thought that this was a quilt that um, has a story behind it, and we wanted to share it. We think it would be interesting to people, and we also think it's a, a pattern that would be great for guilds or groups, and we're here to tell you why we think that. So let's start out, Lori, tell us about how this started. How did we find this pattern? Well, this is the 45th anniversary for Quilter's Newsletter and totally unsolicited Judy Martin, who is an author and a quilt designer and a former Quilter's Newsletter editor, mm -hmm. sent us the pattern and suggested that we have former staff members and current staff members make blocks. We thought it was a wonderful idea, mm -hmm. so sent out emails to all the suggested people that weren't in the building, and we wound up with 15 block makers. Uh, so we wound up with 31 blocks made by staff members and former staff members. And we should say that there are 45 star blocks in the quilt. Correct. Um, for 45 years, because Correct. September is our 45th anniversary month. So um, so we had 31 stars blocks that were made by current and former members, including Bill, our editor-in-chief, who <laughs> we got him to sew, which was awesome. And we all contributed blocks. And some of the blocks, I think some people maybe pulled some, fa like people who are in the building pulled fabric maybe from our sewing room. I know I tried to stick with fabric from my personal stash just because it was fun. <laughs> but I realized I don't have as much red. As I thought, I didn't have as many reds to choose from as I thought, but that's a, we'll, we'll get to that in a few minutes. So we put out the call for the blocks, and we got blocks back in, and, and then what happened? What was the next step in designing the quilt? Because there were still a lot of pieces that were left to be decided upon once we had the blocks back. That's right. So when we sent out the call for blocks, we just said red and white. We didn't specify bluish reds or orangish reds. Right. We just said red and cream. And so we had all of these different shades, which I think is wonderful. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we put them up on the, well, first of all, I, I photographed each person's block so I knew who took, who made which blocks. Mm -hmm. And then we put them up on the design wall. Um, and as a team came together to select the colors for the borders and the background. Mm -hmm. And let's talk about that. Um, let's talk about the fabrics that we see here, primarily this background fabric, which has quite a presence to it. It's not a, in fact, some of the backgrounds used in the blocks recede a lot more. This has a nice presence to it. Um, let's talk about that auditioning process. We, we put all these blocks, the center blocks, in place on the design wall. And then we started pulling different fabrics, creams, lights, to fill in this area. And first of all, we started with something pretty unpatterned, and it was a little flat. It didn't make these blocks pop. So then we, um, we saw this great pattern. It's got a lot of movement. It's pretty even overall. It's got some contrast, but not a lot. And as you can see, when it goes against a pretty plain background in a block, it makes that block pop mm -hmm. a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then the next thing we wanted was an inner border that kind of set off this whole area. So we, again, looked at different reds, different prints. They were just kind of not doing the, the job. And, and so this stripe came up. And um, I think it really pulls together all the different reds and pinks that we've got going on. And the fact that it's geometric graphic 
as opposed to kind of organic, like the rest of these prints are, I think added one more element of contrast. It gives it a structure right. to it. Right. I never thought about that. Mm -hmm. I remember going into the sewing room and seeing that you all had taken these samples, some of them were fat quarter size, some of them right. were even smaller, yeah. and you'd folded them so that they were about this width, the size. and you had mm -hmm. them laid around, pinned up on the, on the design wall mm -hmm. um, around it just to see where the eye went, you know, right. which one drew it in, and this definitely was clearly the best choice <laughs> out of all of them. It was everybody's favorite. Mm -hmm. yes. Everybody who walked in said, oh, I like the stripe. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, yeah. And then um, we have another outer border here that uh, incorporates, again, a lot of the reds and just kind of pulls it all together. Mm -hmm. And it occurs to me, looking at the border from this distance, looking mm -hmm. over to that side, mm -hmm. if we had that outer red border against the inner red border, they may not, they, you may have looked at them and said, mm, those don't really go. Yeah. They don't really go. But there's something about how s wonderfully scrappy this is. I mean, when we have fabrics in here from a variety of manufacturers, mm -hmm. I mean, this, uh, this, background fabric and the inner border are both from Moda, Correct. but then the outer red border um, was from Connecting Threads, right? That's correct. Um, and we have even a different fabric on the back, which we'll show, um, which we use to highlight the quilting. You can see the quilting really well here. Um, this is from Rowan. So, um, those, and those were just our big yardage pieces, not even counting, you know, how many different ages. <laughs> yes, yes. I, have, I, have, I have some fabric in here that's practically vintage and um, yeah, well, we'll get to that some other time. <laughs> um, so we played with the fabric and then we sent it off to? To Peg Spradlin, um, who is a wonderful quilt maker. She made and a contributor. She's a, yes, she's contributed yes. to us in the past, and she frequently um, contributes to some of our sister publications too. Correct. Yeah, she's fantastic. And I just sent her a stack of reds and creams because, as I said, we had thirty-one blocks. So Peg made the rest of the blocks, and you know it was just totally up to her. I sent mm -hmm. way more than enough fabric mm -hmm. for her to choose from, mm -hmm. and she put it all together and. Then we were ready for the quilting design. Mm -hmm. Actually, before we get to the quilting, I want to go back and talk about some of these blocks in particular because um, there are some interesting choices that were made. So I remember when we were first floated the idea of, or when we were first presented with this project and that we were all being asked to make blocks, which was wonderful, was not an imposition. But what was your first question, Susan? Well... <laughs> Lori's, Lori's parameters were use a red fabric and a cream fabric. And I said, well, can I use more than one red fabric in a block and more than one cream fabric? And <laughs> That's the you artist know, talking. Yes. What can I say? So, so I'll just point out, this, this is my, one of my blocks. And so I've got one, two, three, four fabrics going on. Two reds, different patterns that are complementary to each other, and two cream patterns patterns that are kind of complementary to each other. And then I did the same down here. Um, being an anniversary quilt, I just felt we had to have a piece of fabric that had wine glasses in it. Um, <laughs> because of course. Because of course we're celebrating. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I added a little stripe as another kind of cream, and then I just kept the reds the same. And uh, we have another That's one fun. where uh, Kath, right, our other artist on staff kind of did the same thing. Two creams, two reds, but they're, they're so similar that it adds a little bit of variety, mm -hmm. but it doesn't really shout out at you. Right, and so, I tried to do the same thing with a block, um, and that block had problems. It had problems with, as I said, one of the fabrics that I chose to use, which is in that block closest to, right? This one? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. So that, that cream fabric is an old piece, and I realized putting it on the outside trying to use it um, in one of these blocks that has the cream around the outside, it just was not, I remember I brought it into and I said, I'm not happy with this block. <laughs> this fabric is just not, it's just not the same quality. Right. That, that we're used to mm -hmm. these days that yes. with, um, with top quality fabric. So I came back after the weekend before you'd shipped out the blocks and I said, here's a replacement. <laughs> this is better fabric, but I, I was able to keep it for the interior of the block because the fabric that surrounds it 
um, is actually a, a mode of fabric too, and I use that because um, that's from the same line that the QN staff used to make um, my second daughter's baby quilt when I was pregnant, and oh. so it has a little okay. um, sentimental value to me yeah. to have it in here. Um, but anyway, that was just, I, I tried to do what the, the artists did, and it was just not <laughs> nearly as successful. It just takes experimentation, that's all. True. Um, and we have another block down here that, um, well, why don't you describe that block for us? So the pattern has a star that's one color, either cream or red, and the background is the other color. Well, we got this one block where the star is two colors. Mm -hmm. It's got the red center and the cream background. And when we put it in the quilt, it works. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. Um, if you don't point it out, you don't even really see mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. as being different when, when you start looking unless someone points it out or you spend some time studying the quilt. Mm -hmm. So if you're doing a group quilt, you know, don't sweat the small stuff. Yeah. And we have other blocks that um, maybe use a very subtle pattern, but when you get close to the block, you can see, oh, that's actually a fussy cut motif. Mm -hmm. So it's just great because every block has its own personality because we had so many contributors. Some of our um, people who've worked here before who are still working with us, like um, ZJ Humbach, Vivian Ritter, Janet Jo Smith. These are some people that we still have a great relationship with. And then two of the daughters of um, Bonnie and George Lehman, who founded the magazine way back in 1969, right? They contributed yes, as well. Yes, that's right. We have Mary Lehman Austin. Uh, contributed actually three blocks. Okay. Well, and she is a former editor in chief, so the stakes are a little <laughs> higher right. for her. That's right. And Georgianne Hol Holland also contributed two of the blocks. So it's really great um, a group effort. Now, let's go now go back and talk about the quilting because that was also, um, there was a decision making process that went into that too. Can Let's talk about that, Susan. We had um, access to quilt makers' quilting motif books. So um, several of us gathered in the studio, and um, I passed out my historical copies of those books, and we started looking for appropriate patterns. Um, this is an eight-inch block, and this is a six-inch block. So we were looking for something that would fit nicely in each of these blocks, and it came, quilt maker books had a little leafy motif. Um, in the borders here, we've also got um, kind of a double swirl going on, and then it gets mirrored the, the other side. Um, and then the triangles have kind of a nice feather motif going on. Mm -hmm. So we've got a nice mix of three or four different quilting patterns. It gives it a custom look without, without being too fussy, and yet it, it emphasizes all the blocks and parts and pieces of the, of the quilt. It's also um, not terribly time consuming. Right. In terms of motifs, I would, I would guess an experienced uh, machine quilter could, once she got into her rhythm, could, could um, do these fairly easily. I would mm -hmm. think so, yeah. yes. Um, so that was a consideration, too, because we wanted it to have sort of a custom look without it being just, you know, an all-over pattern or something, without it being too time-consuming. And now we have this lovely quilt. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, again, we, we really wanted to share the story of this quilt with our viewers because we think that it has a, a wonderful story and it would be something that um, if you wanted to make it yourself, and you know, I think the lesson learned here is the more the merrier when it comes to the scraps. Um, with reds, I think it's hard to match reds, so why bother trying to match them? <laughs> True. <laughs> um, or if you had a group, you know, a guild, something like that, um, take a look at it. Take a look at this pattern. We really hope that people out there are able to make it and enjoy it. Thanks so much for joining us today. We look forward to seeing you next time. Bye-bye. Quilters Newsletter TV, the Quilters Community, is brought to you by Handy Quilter, designed by a quilter for quilters, and Husqvarna Viking, keeping the world sewing for over 140 years.